Okay, so um, to kind of, I guess, move on from that, uh, there are some uh, topics that we wanted to uh, talk about um, just to kind of, I guess, get caught up on. Um, some news that's kind of a couple months old, some news that's relatively new. Um, I guess we can start off with... What's that? Um, I guess we can kind of start with like the all the interesting stuff that's been going on and uh, one of our... Um, fight night slash wrestling night coverages which has been back and forth with how their management has been doing with their money and everything and that is world wrestling entertainment (laughs) so um i haven't been paying a lot of attention to how things have been going mike's probably done more um but some things that just happen to be in the news i've paid attention to um so i heard mr mcmahon is out yeah um he's retired because of al- sexual allegations and hush money, oh, it sounds like millions of dollars. Nineteen point. Um, I think I think one number was like nineteen point six million, and there was like another like sixteen point something million not recorded. Which I think it was like a creepy uncle. Everyone knew he was doing it, but um, <laughs> you know they didn't think it was that bad kind of thing. But he definitely seemed like the kind of boss that's like, hey, I'll give you a Divas Championship run if you you know do this stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that I'm glad, I don't know. Did you think that's how McMahon's career was going to end or I thought he was going to die? Uh, so like, I didn't, I didn't think he was the kind of, kind of guy that has a retirement. We, we, uh, we all know kind of how like my stance was when it came to WWE, uh, right, like right around the time, like probably about eight, like six to eight months before he retired. Um, cause I started to kind of like back away from uh, world wrestling entertainment. Like I would still kind of keep track of it and like read up on it on Instagram and everything, but I didn't really want to cover it on the channel, uh, except for rumble and mania because you requested it. Um, but it's just with a lot of the booking and, um, the decisions that they would make when it came to the content on, on the wrestling and then just all of the random, like, hundreds of people who lost their jobs within the last like two years was just getting ridiculous because like like i had said before um there was a lot of there's a lot of people that got fired that i was just kind of like i mean they didn't really do too much there was just they were kind of just there and gone they got pushed up to the main roster from nxt a little too quick i feel like mcmahon has been and this might be a little bit further back than people might agree but there was a time when I was like, okay, he's kind of out of touch. This isn't good. Um, the uh, the last, the first time I remember thinking that was the Vladimir Kozlov and Santina Marella Tea Party. Um, that was like 2011. 2011. So I I felt like 2011 on. It was just bad. Oh God. Overall, there's good moments. There's good moments that happen. Sure, but. I don't think I don't think it was being handled correctly um, by McMahon, and it just got so bad. Um, the, the the really nail in the coffin is after the Triple H thing happened with the NXT. Um, they pretty much there was like firing anybody that had anything to do with that NXT, blaming Triple H for the failure of NXT, which they and were NXT was doing better than the main product. Yeah, and like they were trying to blame NXT for it because Vince was trying to go to war with AEW at the time, and Triple H. That doesn't make what? any sense. I, I the feel whole like whole thing didn't make any sense to me. I feel like Triple H wasn't really trying to have a quote unquote ratings war with AEW, and of course, like Tony Khan and. Chris Jericho and a bunch of other people from AEW were saying, like, I don't know what they're doing over there. Like, we're not trying to, like, put them out of business or anything or try to go into ratings war with them. We just want to be another alternative. Like, that's all they want to be right now. And, like, it's, like, drama aside over there, which will And I get... felt like it was McMahon, McMahon pushing that. Yeah, and, like, drama aside that that's going on over there, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, I kind of do enjoy that there's another alternative out there that's actually mainstream on television because it's really hard to find um, impact anywhere because that, that's usually like on like internet like wrestling and they're done and they've been bought out three different times. By I different mean, company. they're still active. They're, they're still active. They're still. An I know they're company. still active, but there is a time 
when when TNA was legit competition for WWE and they would never insinuate them. I, I think what happened, what, what was the killing of TNA is Hogan. actually whenever they let they well okay the true na- final nail in the coffin, not the very beginning cancer spores that were Hogan and and, and Ric Flair, Hogan Flair um, and Bischoff. Yeah, um, but uh, whenever they let Mickey James come out with the Impact title at the Rumble a couple years ago, yeah, um, that for me meant that they are truly not competition and they're not remotely afraid of TNA anymore. I mean, I because before that, you couldn't even you couldn't get away with even saying anything about anyone that's in TNA. I'll just say the nail in the coffin was like a long before that when they got bought out a bunch of times and like with Anthem not really. Anthem having that lawsuit with the Hardy brothers, a lot of the legal issues that they had with Alberto Del Rio, which he's had a lot of a lot of legal issues with all the other companies he's been in, good fucking lord. And um the big one was Dixie Carter, because she had no idea what the fuck she was doing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But um Um Yeah. Like Well yeah, just the general direction of WWE I felt like is not was not very well. Um, now I haven't seen it since then, but how would you say Triple H has been running the company? Now Triple H is not in charge of the company. No, he's it, it's, uh, it's Stephanie McMahon. It's Stephanie McMahon and Nick Nick Conher are in charge, and Triple H is like head of like creative pretty much. So even though well, he's head of creative and he's a, he's the COO, right? Yeah, and he Chief has operating officer, and he has so Sean day to day. He has Sean Michaels in charge of NXT. Yeah, which is good because yeah. uh, Shawn Michaels was choreographing most of the matches before that, anyways, right? I f- I think he was when Triple H was in charge of NXT, but after he had got blamed for the 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 fucking which is so ratings shitty, man. Because Triple H had a heart attack and almost died, and then and then he's gonna blame Triple H for ratings wars when Triple H is all fucked up, like. I would have been. I, I don't know. Uh, I I don't know what would have been running through Triple H's mind whenever that happened. Yeah. But. Um. For whenever I decided to make the decision to stop covering wrestling was, there were two nails in the coffin. Um, the first nail in the coffin was um, I don't remember which pay per view it was, but it was the pay per view where they had the Army of the Dead promotion when they had the zombies come out during that oh, one God. match. <laughs> like, cause I, I actually remember, cause we were, we were recording every single, we watched that movie like, like, we, like that, I think uh, we were actually recording every single pay-per-view and I was editing highlights pretty much every month when it came to WWE content. And I re- remember recording that pay-per-view and I, we had long passed the, the zombie match and we were going into the next match and I literally just got up, turned the camera off and said, I'm not editing that. I'm just going to fucking delete it <laughs> because I was just like that. That was like, okay, this is fucking ridiculous, but oh, Lord, you wasted enough of my life. on This bullshit. <laughs> that was the first nail in the coffin for me. Yeah. But like the other thing was just like the massive amount of firings that, um, that were happening, which like when, it, which we'll get into. I that. Cause like, I, I know that like when you, I, I kind of know your opinion about Bray Wyatt, how like you, like, He's a good talker and everything, but like the way he was booked first when he fir- was first in WWE, he wasn't really booked strong. I guess he was just a good talker. But um, um, for me, it's just whenever I say something that's con- that's not necessarily a popular opinion, but I think that over uh, uh, overrated. You'd say he's overrated. Overall, I'd say he's overrated. I mean. I mean, like there, like I wouldn't say that's controversial because there's actually quite a few people out there who um, actually didn't like the whole Firefly Funhouse and Fiend, and Fiend gimmick because it was too uh, gimmicky, or if it was it was too like comic booky and like it, it'd work in the eighties. Jim Cornette would have loved it in the eighties. <laughs> I mean, for, for me, Jim it, Cornette probably hated that everything about that. Probably, I mean, like for me, like when it came to the Firefly Funhouse, like it was. I was actually a fan of it, and to me, it felt like uh, honestly a breath of fresh air when it came to WWE because I was getting tired of seeing 
pretty much wash, rinse, repeat when it came to like storylines and matches and, and whatnot. Like, yeah, there was a couple really good matches that I got into. Granted, side note, I was drunk through most of them. But, <laughs> um, like, it was just a, a complete change of pace. Uh, he had complete control of the character for the most part, and whenever they finally just, like, let him go and, like, got rid of him, uh, that's when I was just like, you know, like, they they ruined the character completely, and they're, it's just, they don't see him as a physical threat because of his weight and everything, and they just got rid of him. And well, I was, he's, and he never won. He never won. He, I mean, like, he. <laughs> whenever he came to the, the Fiend gimmick, he started winning actual big, well, a, a couple he did lose to because of last-minute changes. Yeah. We don't talk they about never that had on the cell match. They didn't, they didn't book him to be impressive and win matches. He was just, like, a joke almost. Almost, yeah. It's like somebody, somebody was like, I'm going to make a creepy creative character. And that's what it felt like. Somebody <laughs> was just making a creepy creative character. But um, for me, that was kind of like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore because it was just completely dumb, which in turn, that wasn't the last time I covered WWE because we ended up covering the Rumble and uh, Mania later on that year or leading into the next year. And that was kind of a, a you decision. And I kind of was like, all right, we'll we'll do it, I guess. And it turned out to be same shit, different day when it came to that. Fast forward to the sudden announcement that, uh, um, well, first the allegations came out, the sexual allegations that came out, and, like, it was surprising a lot of people how, like, somebody finally blew the whistle on Vince when it came to that shit, which I'm, I don't know if that really affected his relationship, his, his um, marriage at all. I haven't really heard anything, like, Linda getting pissed off at him or anything, but I would say for a normal person, that would affect your relationship with your significant other greatly. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, and you, so how WWE is being ran now, do you think that it's being ran better? I think overall, like, I mean, with getting him out of the way and trying to fix all of his mistakes, especially with the multitude of millions of dollars that have just disappeared um they from the i like I, I there was a i didn't watch crown jewel this morning um because crown jewel was uh earlier today but i watched uh extreme rules um a while back and it was the only complaint i would say is that i know is that i would probably um take one of the belts off of Roman because with him having both belts that kind of puts him back into that puts us back into kind of a Brock Lesnar situation where like independent how long he only shows up on one of the shows the other show like he only shows up on Smackdown with both titles and that leaves Raw without a world champion completely and like every time he ends up defending the titles it's for both the belts and it's like well how come Raw doesn't have a world championship or anything, so that kind of puts them in a situation where they have to push up the mid-card belt and the other belts, put them in at a higher um, importance and whatnot. But that was mainly my... That's mainly my only complaint right now is that there's really no world champion on Raw. Like, it's just SmackDown and SmackDown. Yeah, and they might just keep them like that until they can produce... Uh... They don't have any big star power is their issue yeah and that's because of vince because he vince didn't really push anyone else up there to that would make sense to dethrone roman at all like i would even say like like uh drew mcintyre like i mean he's considered a main eventer but i don't think he's don't, the person I've really to beat him. Seen him as a main eventer. i mean with it the way that they book him now and everything like i truly thought like um brock was going to be the guy to finally take the belt away from them but they just it just didn't go well, a couple years ago it was the other way around it's like brock was just like the champion forever and like who's going to beat brock and it's like it's going to be Rome. it's like it's the same thing different person pretty it's much nothing new yeah and the direction is not new and i blame bruce richard for this yeah de that's my definitely grace. i mean that they're still trying to push should not be they're still trying to push for that Roman and Rock match for Mania. And they've been trying to push that since the year before COVID. 
And yeah, because The Rock said in an interview, I remember watching that, where he said he is the, uh, Rock said that he's the head of the team. Um, and uh, I know that was kind of trying to, they're like, oh, yeah, they're definitely going to do it. And, of course, Rock backstepped and was like, you know, like, I, I mean, like, um, I, I, it, it could happen, but I'm just so busy with everything and whatnot. And I'm like, Rock, Rock, quit bullshitting. Like, we know that you're going to find He's a way to do it. <laughs> and the Rock's getting older, too. Oh, God, yeah, like, the last time he had a full He's length, the, the full, the last time The Rock had a full length match, he fucking pulled a fucking hamstring. And that was with John Cena. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I don't think, I don't think Rock should be, you know, he's got a good image. He works out a lot, and he's in amazing shape, but, uh, you know, he's getting older, and I don't want to see him get some kind of injury. Like, r did you hear about r Yeah, I heard he got injured on NXT. Two different, well, so he had, apparently he had some kind of bad crash that he had the other day that was a really bad spot where he hit his head, and then he tore his quad on NXT. Yeah. So um, he's going to be out for a little bit. So. Yeah, and they were getting ready to put him back on TV, yeah. too. It seemed like yeah, which I'm surprised. Um, Black don't crack, because he, he still looks like the same like he did fucking 15 years ago. He, I swear that man never ages. Yeah. Um, but Not like really. M- I remember when he debuted on, on, on SmackDown. Uh... They did all the little... Up. They did the they they did the same kind of video package thing. It was around the time whenever Alberto Del Rio was doing it. Is, yeah. is, except like Alberto Del Rio had the really awkward one where he'd stare at the screen he'd be like, like forever, and it's like, what is this guy doing? And it'd just be like, I watched this at like three a.m. and I'd be like, I can't stay awake for this shit. This is so <laughs> and then I didn't I didn't know who our truth was, and uh, because he had he had been run killings and a bunch of other things. Um, but it was just like, oh yeah, they insinuated that he was a black guy that just got out of jail and he's gonna turn his life around. I was gonna say like, I, I was gonna say like, our our truth was, I mean, we knew he was Ron Killings from Impact, but he was also K Quick from the '90s. Yeah, so he's been around. Yeah, it's just that was my first. Ex- I've never heard. I'd never heard of him. Just like I heard of, uh, I heard of uh, Seth Rollins, but in his indie name. Years and years, mm-hmm. everyone was always talking about him. But yeah. Then, yeah. So, okay, well, Tyler Black is. But um, to talk so. about the the good stuff, like they're they're working out the kinks the best they can, and um, Triple H has been rehiring a lot of people that I feel like got wrongfully released and everything, and I feel like that most of them, except for one superstar in particular, are in a spot where they deserve to be on the roster, and they're actually in really right. good storylines and everything, and the it's just, they're, they're in the right spots right now. The only person I feel like that they shouldn't have brought back was Braun Strowman. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they brought him back. Yeah, and all that. But, um, to going back to Extreme Rules, like the big thing about Extreme Rules was the return of Bray Wyatt, and then, like that was probably the biggest highlight of the night. Like they teased it and teased it and teased it, and then they were pretending that like nothing was going on, and like right before the show ended, even with the watermark and everything, boom, there's Bray Wyatt. Show ends, and I'm just like, that is how you do a return <laughs> completely, because how they built up his return was like perfect. And now they're like slowly telling, um, they're slowly telling a story of like, um, with Bray, how like he is trying to um, become a new man, trying to do everything the right way, trying to like actually talk out his feelings and everything. But he's also fighting like his inner demons, and like there's this other character that he's obviously playing, but it's like him him fighting with like the angel and the devil on his shoulder, trying to like go between the right and the wrong thing. I feel like that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, in other news, uh, when it comes to wrestling, uh, Ryback recently put a video called Man Eating Chips, and it's him eating chips. Oh, man. Ry- Ryback is always trying to... Uh... He He's always Bro, trying... He's got, like, nothing on his Twitter, dude. He must be shadow banned. It's, like, two comments or, like, ten likes. And, Pretty like, much. Nobody's. Like... He's been trying to become relevant since he got fired. Let's see. He only he has one point three million followers. He's just annoying now. Like he's just trying to be relevant. 
Yeah, he's he's real French. Um, anyways, so moving on. Uh, all right, so we've covered uh, World Wrestling Entertainment. Let's cover what's been going on on the other side of the the ocean, and that is all elite wrestling. <laughs> Uh, you think uh, well, that... the good news is I heard CM Punk came back, right? No, uh, no. Wrestling again? He did. He did. Um, if you think the drama at WWE good. was bad, wait till you, wait till, if you if you live under a rock wait. and don't know what's been going on AEW, then <laughs> wait. Worse than worse than telling his boss that the company's gonna be better when he dies. Oh God! Or getting fired on your wedding day. So that aged really well, though. <laughs> oh man! Like, er, basically, the the main problem that AEW is been dealing with, besides the usual issues that they have, is being a new company, not having enough money, ha- hiring too many people, getting overstuffed with all that. That's just normal not having an experienced leader to know how to handle situations that's that's normal when it comes to a new company and whatnot but this big There's a one reason wwe has never done press conferences yeah and it's because like cm punk is a really good example of it because there's the whole oh man like every time i talk about it i just get so pissed off what's up with cm punk and colt cabana because any time his career gets fucked up, it's something to do with Colt. I mean, he... Like, okay, the the first time was the lawsuit. Because, like, they were going to do, like, a rights yeah. thing when it came to the podcast episode they did. The second time was just CM Punk talking shit out of his ass when he was asked a question. About that had, him. That, there was a question. Him that, living with it off his mom. And the bank and account shit. and everything. But, like, the thing is, like, he didn't even answer the question. He just started talking shit. He started bringing up yeah, old no, news from 12 years ago. I heard that they put Colt Cabana on a recent episode of AEW. Oh, they, they put him back on. As a kind of, fuck you. Yeah, they did this past Wednesday. They brought him back, and, like, everyone predicted it. <laughs> yeah. And I've been and I've been, seeing, I've been seeing a bunch of articles um, that a lot of, a lot of people are coming out saying CM Punk was the fault. Uh, yeah. And not anybody else. I mean, like, he's the one that kind of... Well, like, before that media scrum had happened, he had uh, tweeted oh, out saying... Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. Well, well, like, Matt Hardy did... Yeah, Matt Hardy did say that, yeah. But um, I know that when Punk was going out for that media scrum that night, he had tweeted out and saying, uh, stay, for the, uh, stay for the media scrum, it's going to get interesting. So he was definitely calling out attention to himself just so he can fucking rant about everything. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people... Ever since that night, from here on out, like they've been looking back at old promos that he had with Triple H back with the whole "best in the world" gimmick, or the voice of the voiceless, and they referenced the promo where like Triple H is like, "Man, like you only you you only want to be in the company where you're always going to be the top guy. You're you're just a martyr. You don't actually like go around and tell people what you're going to do. You just like backdoor your way through everything." And everyone's like, well, that aged pretty well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, where do you see CM Punk's career coming from now? Because he's in the later stages. Uh, I, I think he's done. Like, there, there's still more talk about his contract getting bought out, but... I, I, I heard some false planted news that they were talking about bringing him back to WWE, but I just don't see that happening. There, there was actually some talk about doing that. Like, Triple H was originally Well, interested. I heard that that happened, but then I heard that that was a planted story and they were never even considering bringing him back. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that may have been the, ish, the thing because, like, I mean, you, you know that Triple H pays attention to what go, goes on over there. Like, Yeah, I don't see Triple H and him ever being on the same page. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, I, I feel... I don't want to say I told you so, but... It, I guess so. Uh, it's just... I, for me, they should have never hired CM Punk. I think CM Punk's a huge draw, and I think they definitely should... I think hiring was the right thing. Um, I felt like uh, CM Punk's one of those people you don't really want at a press conference, though. No. That's like having Conor McGregor at a press conference. It's oh, not a good idea. Oh, man, yeah.